We're developing a regenerative medicine solution for circumcised men. Our focus is on a critical preclinical research project led by Forgen's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Stanislav Zorayan, and Chief Bioengineer, Jan Kovac. This study aims to finalize and validate the protocols we will use in our human clinical trials. Now we can see a 3D decellularized foreskin. This is the cylindrical shape. Millions of men worldwide were circumcised as infants, long before they were old enough to consent. That's why we're developing a regenerative medicine surgical procedure that uses advanced techniques to restore the foreskin, an important, functional, and highly innervated part of the male anatomy. Hi, my name is Ryan Jones, and I'm the Chief Operations Officer at Forgen. Forgen is a nonprofit organization based in the United States with research operations in the European Union. Our leadership, research staff, and supporters span more than 80 countries. Together, we're pioneering an effort to restore what was lost. Our focus is on a critical preclinical research project led by Forgen's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Stanislav Zorayan, and Chief Bioengineer, Jan Kovac. Our ultimate goal is to complete development of this procedure, conduct human clinical trials to test safety and efficacy, and eventually make this solution available to patients. Our team recently traveled to Pistini, Slovakia, to visit the lab and document this progress. So as our samples arrive to the facility, they are either frozen for a few hours at minus 20, or for a long time, there's a long storage at minus 80. Uh, but for prolongated times, we can use storage in liquid nitrogen, if we like. So if you follow me. The four milestones of this project are as follows. Tissue collection. Donor tissue is harvested from cadavers and safely transported to the lab in Pistini. In this facility, we have multiple uh, data storage. So the liquid nitrogen, as I mentioned, are possibility for long time storage. And then for the majority of the samples are sitting, is have a freezer for minus 80. Where all the vesselized so, uh, samples are at the moment sitting. So let's check together. So in the bottom, there are more samples that have been vesselized and uh, stored. So within the bags, they are sterilized, sterilized sealed. So uh, at the moment, uh, there's multiple samples there, vesselized uh, by different strategies and more are coming. So on this visitor uh, is always full of samples. There are the, uh, either arriving from the process and wait for uh, further processing, or they're immediately taken to the different facilities or laboratories for further analysis and further experiments. Dynamic decellularization. The donor cells are removed using a specialized method that pumps solutions through the tissue, preserving the extracellular matrix while removing DNA dynamic recellularization. Patient-derived cells are reintroduced into the scaffold, allowing the tissue to begin developing new functional cells. So the strategy is simple. In this uh, huge uh, flask, there are conditions that are specific, and we, in the first step, we'd like to decelerize the structure. So the cells will just go away and we will have only the structure with the predefined architecture. This actually came from nature. Then in the bioreactor that's only for me, by boosting the cells, this, the, we are going to reseed the structure and hopefully the cells will then repopulate the structure and we get new native tissue that's specific to the acceptor. Bioreactor maturation. The tissue is matured in a bioreactor, which is a device that mimics the body's environment before surgical implantation. So behind me you can see the bioreactor room, but both of our bioreactors are uh, at the service station. So one that's the closer to me the, the, for the desolization and uh, one further from me that's for that's the bioreactor for resolization or boosting cells. The bioreactor is basically just a uh, huge glass blast with a lot of bells and whistles that are helping to either grow cells and, and proliferate so the cells can be happy and can really reseed the structure or the one for desolization that's a bioreactor that actually helps the cells to really go away from the structure. Jan has expertise in tissue engineering, decellularization, bioreactors, and clinical compliance, 
experience gained from his previous work at IQVIA, a major contract research organization. We saw the tissue samples, the equipment used for each protocol, and learned how Jan is adapting and refining these tools to meet clinical standards. Uh, as I mentioned, the bioreactor is just a huge flask, a huge glass body with a lot of bells and whistles around it that helps either boost the cell proliferate or we're going to get the cells out of the structure. So they're in different volumes. So this one, for example, is just two liters. It's high quality glass. It has to uh, withstand everything that's, that's given to it. Uh, there are uh, actually the main port uh, through which used to import the, uh, the sample. There are some other ports that you need either for checking the pH, temperature levels or different sensors that you like. And there are some uh, other ports that you use to pump in and pump out any solution or debris or anything you want. So all of it is just in one huge machine that's controlled and hooked to the mm, control PC. So this is a piece of art. <laughs> you can have different types of, of uh, uh, scanners or some sensors, depends on you. Yeah. Uh, then some pumping in, pumping out. You can have the pumps hooked to the, to the main head as well, or yeah. to the side port, I'm going to show you. And then, of course, you can, uh, some of them are blended. A lot of them, you probably you don't do it. Yeah, completely modular. So, so you can use Perfect. it for desolization, resolization, and if everything goes uh, the proper way, you can even stimulate the cells inside with some, with some mechanical stimulation as well. So you, right. if, if, if it's complex enough, and uh, there's, there's another, another design that we are trying to get out of our supplier to try to enlarge this, this port. Or to have, there's, there's one opinion, one option, it's, it's completely, completely cut in half, and this way you have to seal it really well, but uh, this way you can have the mechanical stimulation device inside. So if you, if you want to do experiments like that, if you want to go for, for full uh, experiments with the bioreactors and mechanical stimulation, as for this was, this was it, you, can, you can use a really huge one. Uh, the, downside is, the downside is that the consumption is quite huge. Yeah. The solutions are expensive and two liters of solutions uh, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, and two, 200 liters of, of solutions is okay money. Yeah. So this one uh, using two thousand milliliters of solution that's a pretty 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 thirsty boy so this one can really uh, take the consumption out but the mm. you know, working with it is really nice you have a lot of room these steps are the foundation of our future clinical trials and this current phase is where we are refining every detail to ensure safety repeatability and clinical success and, uh, the clean rooms are behind me, so all the air filtration we can see and all the machinery around us is keeping the air pure, the germs, full of the equipment at the moment, the desolization is running there, the bioreactor is in a ready-to-go stage, so we are doing some maintenance on it and taking it, and also there are some other samples in the processing. So we're gonna get to suit and we're gonna go inside. 